Good evening, this is Tanisha Laverne, Graham reporting live from Cipriani Wall Street in New York City for the Paley Center's very special tribute to music and television. So stay tuned. I am with the iconic Mr. Paul Schaefer. So we much. know him from Dave Letterman, though your career started, wow, many years ago. I mean, you were a member of the Blues Brothers, and it just goes on and on and on. Right. Talk to me a little bit about coming on board Dave or Letterman. Like, do you remember like those early moments, like when you got the phone call to be a part of that? I got the phone call to come in and have a meeting with him first, see if you hit it off, and we did. Okay. And he mentioned that he had seen me on the early SNL. Uh, wow. where I used to play often for Bill Murray when he would do his lounge singer act. Uh, Letterman found that hilarious, and uh, he wanted a little of that uh, on his show. You know what? You definitely were one of the reasons why I would tune in. Very sweet of you. I mean, I'm like, oh my God, he's on. Oh, let's you. see what let's see what the kiki is going to be about tonight between you and, and Dave. It was absolutely amazing. It sure was uh, absolutely real. It was the true reality television. There was nothing rehearsed, and I didn't know wow. what he was going to say to me. And that was where the fun was. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So think of one of the most iconic performances on television you can think of, and who would that be? Well, I'm thinking James Brown's first appearance on Letterman in 82. Oh, wow. my. I mean, he, well, he did three songs. The third one wasn't even rehearsed. And he just tore the roof off the sucker. I'm telling you, uh, I've never forgotten it. Wow. So the decision to do the Paley Center for Media tribute to music and television came about how and why? Like, what was the impetus for that? Well, first of all, we love to do things that have never been done before. So this is a first of its kind event where we'll open up the Paley archive and sort of take the audience on a journey through seven decades of television. Oh my goodness. But as Mr. Ch with our chairman likes to say is that it's not um, so well known of how music truly impacts culture and that if you look at history how it's really sort of paved the way for so many seismic cultural shifts so maybe you could yeah, speak not, a little not only that. on television you when you think about it it makes eminently good sense but it's something that hasn't been yeah. done before but all of us remember programs by their theme music for example and, and all of us remember the great things on television the Beatles on Ed Sullivan etc and of course society has recognize that in the aftermath of every tragic event in the United States, music has brought us together. Yeah, and it so it's not only television, it's what's the role of music in society, and what better to exhibit it than television. Well, music is definitely the soundtrack. Talk to me about one of the most iconic moments you've seen on television. I think, for me, and again, it's always like seeing ourselves on television so like shaft and the music for shaft Ooh, come on shaft a bad yeah. mother yeah. <laughs> right okay so shaft uh, because it was just like that that strong music where you know you're just like yes it gets yeah. you you hear it and you get ready for the show because it was appointment television then also i was really into jingles i love Ooh. jingles you know, favorite um, one. Roto Rooter. I was just singing that the other day that I posted. Roto Rooter. That's What's the name? Eight. It'll drive your troubles <laughs> down the drain. You know, Roto Rooter. You know I need some Roto Rooter. I got some troubles. I need to go down the dog on drain. <laughs> Girl, I can help you. Oh my goodness. So, Whitney Houston. Yes. Michael Jackson. James Brown. Yeah. John Legend. I mean. I mean, you know what else? I think that in terms of music, and I don't know what they're going to show. You know you've, those iconic moments. Speaking of Whitney Houston, when she sang the national anthem, you know, those moments where you come back to that and everybody is like, Yeah, Whitney, what? Houston, Whitney Houston has come up in every interview tonight. So when you think over the years, name one of the most iconic performances that really touched your heart, that really, like, you were like, oh my goodness. All right, it happened three weeks ago. Oh, wow. I was in Los Angeles. I played the Walt Disney Theater in downtown L.A. I know exactly Did where you that know is. I've been there. It's Frank Gehry's yeah. great design. What a beautiful yeah. building. It's like 2,400 seats. I played to a full house. I was in voice. It was one of those lucky nights. Um, it was just a fabulous night. I was so appreciative to the Lord that my voice is now back. And I can have the fun of warbling. Wow. It was one of those nights that just came together. I love my show. Wow. 
I work with just a guitar and just a piano, and we're a small unit. And uh, you made it happen. I'm I'm really digging performing right now. So when you think about a tele a television performance, you know you're at home, you're tuned in. Who comes on? That's like oh my god. James Taylor. James Taylor. James Taylor for the win. If James Taylor comes on, that's the win. I'm I'm suddenly at the edge of my sofa. What's he going to sing? How's his voice? What's his attitude? I, I'm a huge fan. What can I say? <laughs> so who, who's your favorite artist? Like who are you checking for right now? Who's on your playlist? Um, right now, you know, I'm I'm thoroughly and completely impressed with Childish Gambino. I mean, he's a, he's an artist, artist, and he's um. You know, he, he, he's true about his art form. He creates it and he lets it go into the universe and let us, as the fans, dissect it. And I love that. You know, music is everything when you're a student at an HBCU. Absolutely. When I'm you're, not, on, you're on Howard's campus. Like, what was pumping? What was coming out of the uh, dormitories when you were a student on campus? I mean, Wu-Tang, a lot of Wu-Tang, a lot of meth, red. You know, it was a while ago. So what? God. That's is still listen that stuff is still very relevant oh, i know yeah. i mean we did i did some legendary parties when i was howard i did uh my freshman year i i was behind red man method man biggie smalls Ooh, i was help promote that that was biggie a big, wait yeah. you met biggie yeah yeah that was a huge concert that was a big concert at howard i was wow. at the old post office pavilion um yeah y'all hear him talking for all the bisons out there <laughs> this man met biggie <laughs> I'm just going to walk away with that, AJ. Thank you so much for your All time. Right. Always good to see you. Give me some moments in television where you saw some of your favorite icons in music just blow you away. Um, you know, The Wiz was, was a big defining moment for me, uh, musically, historically, just in my life. Um, there's so much. I mean, God, everybody. Diana Ross. I mean, say it, I say know, it, I know, say it. No, I don't want to lose my mind here in the I Paley know, Center honor. No, Diana Ross. But come on, Everything. there's so much music that has touched our That Central Park? Come on, yeah. come on. Let me tell you, me and my sister used to like put a towel around her head. <laughs> Yes, and Absolutely. like with our little dance skin, like body suits on, we were like that big, straight up and down, like six o'clock, yes. with these towels on, yes. like yes, <laughs> give, I give Diana, it. yes, yes, yeah. the, and 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 how beautiful was that childhood? Yeah. How how wonderful did that make you feel? Yeah, you yeah. music more than anything really touches the heart and the soul and the passion of people and when it does something to change people's perspective and and thoughts on the world and other cultures it's amazing talk to me about one of the most iconic memories you have of an artist on television and how that resonated with you and what that meant to you i mean there's there's millions especially because i'm i'm i am an artist myself and just kind of seeing their uh, their impact, especially when it comes through from television, like watching Prince on the Super Bowl or watching Michael Jackson shut down television to show Remember the Time. It was it's iconic moments like that that show what an artist, especially you know, especially us like a black artist can do. It's it's amazing. Absolutely. So who are you listening to? Who's on your playlist? Besides your own work, who's on your playlist right now? Uh, there's a there's a bunch of people, you know. Um, Ella May, SZA, uh, Kosh, yeah, Cautious Clay, um, Nastasha. Uh, a lot of my friends, you know. We got uh, my, one of my homeboys about to drop. His name is Maze. Uh, there's a bunch of people that you know are coming what? up. I gotta say, I love that about you. You are very supportive. Very supportive of people who are trying to get put on and the people who stand beside you in the industry. So when you saw Childish Gambino's latest new, I mean, This Is America, what did you think about that? I was excited. I was excited. And um, it just, it's, it's literally another boulder thrown into the water of all, like everything else that we've done so far and, and to see it, it just made me so happy and so proud to be uh, to be black or, or, or just to be an artist in today's say it, say it, yeah. in, in, to the, in today's society and, and like be like yo our ideas like can impact the world this is ridiculous and then he hit number one I'm like I'm hyped 
I'm hype. I have a million ideas. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Donald. You've inspired me. You always inspired me since we were younger. But like, wow. this is this is nuts. So what's next for you, Mac Wild? I mean, uh, a lot more movies, more TV. Cause you do it. You do it all. You know, you're like your generation's what I like to. I'm like Jamie Foxx is another one. You know, he's from like my era. Yeah. He does everything, and you remind me so much of him. It's like. There will be an Oscar for you down the pipeline somewhere. I, I smell it. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, just wait. If you think I do everything now, wait till the end of this year. I, I got to sing with uh, Paul McCartney. Uh, the original version of Yesterday was called Scrambled Eggs because at the time when he was writing the song, he didn't have an iPhone to record it. So he just wrote down, Scrambled Eggs, oh my lady, how I love your legs. So he just wrote that down. So we had him on the show and said, what if you sang the real song, Scrambled Eggs? And he goes, only if you do it with me. So I got to sing with Paul McCartney on our show. Wow. And it was the unbelievable. Paul McCartney. It was amazing. Tanisha Laverne Grant, blackinamerica.com.